Welcome to the planet. Be sure to put I subscribe down in the comments when you do and watch more of our playlist. Oh, you don't like donuts very much, do you? 
mosey along now, because I got to see him. Jimmy, Jimmy, wake up. Mr. Blake's leaving. You going? When you brand some more cows and horses, can I come over and help? Sure, you bet. Well, good night, Sally. Good night. Oh, wait. You forgot your gun. Well, I was aiming to leave it. Why? So that I have an excuse to come back tomorrow. Oh, you don't need an excuse. Don't I? Well.
So this is why you want to stay home. You dirty rat. You'll be all right, Mr. Steele. Here, let's get your collar open. Is that better? husband is dead. You ought to blame for this. Who did it? What happened, Bob? Someone shot the boy. Give me the sheriff's office. This is Mrs. John Steele. My husband has been shot. Yes, killed. Yes, I know who did it. All right. Please hurry. Sheriff Miss Steele. Sorry to disturb you, but you said you knew. Who was it? Bob Blake. It's a lie. Bob Blake. Are you sure it was Bob? Did you see him do it? Look at his gun, Sheriff. That's not my gun. Well, you're wearing it. What's it doing in your holster? I don't know, but I'm telling you, that's not my gun. Maybe not, but you wear it. I guess we'll have to kick in, Bob. Now, Mrs. Steele, would you mind telling me just exactly what happened? This man has been annoying me for some time. Tonight, my husband caught him. Caught him? Yes, trying to force his way into my room. Don't let him get away! I've got him! Let go, you got me, you fool! Stay 
way off. Well, you're going to tell me the truth, or I'm going to choke it out of you. All right, big boy, stop choking. Here's the pay you've got coming. And I'd advise you to get across the border. Tonight. All right. You win now. But I'll be back. And when I do... The sheriff will still be waiting for you. What are you doing here? I rode out there. Don't you see my horse? How to help your brother get away, huh? No, sir. I thought y'all wanted to race. I ought to run you in. Well, y'all run me out there. You might as well run me in. Ah. Come on. Dance, Not bad, beautiful. Sort of reminds me of a heifer full of local weed. A heifer? That's something more graceful. <laughs> Give me some of this, Dee Dee. You'll be an overall. 
you like to make some real money? What do you call real money? One thousand dollars. That all depends. What's the job? It depends. I want a certain woman, uh, well, uh, eliminated.
Wait a minute, Butch. I'll make it $2,000. Eh? Cash. When the job is... Who's the woman? Brethren, and your brother Carter, I believe. And who are you? Allow me to introduce myself. Mister, but that paper said that you is dead. As Mark Twain once said, the report of my death has been greatly exaggerated. But in this case, I find it very convenient. Yeah, I can see that all right. Now. Come here. It is written in the good book, brother, that providence shall guide the footsteps of the weary pilgrim to a haven of peace and rest. <coughs> I see you have another guest, a noisy one. Yeah, but she won't make no noise after tomorrow. Oh, you're going to a... Uh... Yeah. Not until after I collect. See? An excellent idea. I see you're a very good businessman. Oh, I'm not so dumb. Two thousand ain't bad for one night's work, is it? with that gun, ain't you? Who are you to miss? Brother, the next time I miss will be the first time. So you get $2,000 for the night's work, eh? In New York, they work much cheaper. You know, so much competition. Someone likely to hear her? No, there's nobody within 10 miles of while we hang out here. Then why not keep her for a while? She must know something. That's why somebody's paying you to get rid of her. All right, collect the $2,000. Tell 
Alan, you did the job. Then collect again. And keep on it. I've got to find some woman. Bob, you say you're two. They won't be watching you so close. Then you can get your chance. Look out. City fellas get up mighty early and mighty quiet, don't you? And you rule against that? Now, don't go snooping around here quiet like. It ain't healthy. I've never been sick a day in my life, Brother Carter. Now, now, now don't go get sore about it. You know how it is, a fellow. Well, you can't be too careful. I'm going to take a little ride right after breakfast. Uh, a little collection to do. You want to go along? Well, uh, I... Sure, I'd like to see some of the country here around about. If you all don't get back time for lunch, you're going to miss the best mess of chitlins that you ever laid your lips on. Brother, did you say chitlins? I didn't say nothing else but. You may count on me. Hey, Deacon, for a tenderfoot, you handle the Bronx pretty good. Well, I used to be 11th Avenue Cowboy. 11th Avenue Cowboy? Sure, I used to ride down 11th Avenue in front of the train, waving a red lantern. Was you ever a real preacher? I preach the gospel, brother. Gun gospel. Where do we go from here? I reckon you'd better not go any further. You know me around here as a miner. Someone might recognize you. Town people's likely to get kind of stirred up about that woman, you know, who can't do uh... You're right, brother. I'll wait for you here. Oh, don't bother about waiting. I'll see you later at camp. Excitement of plenty. Miss Steele's been murdered or kidnapped. I don't know which. Mrs. Steele? Murdered? Why, that's terrible, Chef. Is there anything I can do? I'm afraid not, Mr. Barker. I'd give a thousand dollars reward for the capture of them. We've got to make this community safe to live in. Okay, Mr. Barker. I'll do all I can. See you later. You mean you've lost your father? Yeah, and now we've got to move because Sally won't marry 
by Mr. Barker. He's the guy that's got all the mortgages on this ranch. And he says if Sally marries him, he'll send me to school. If Sally don't like him, then I don't want to go to school. I want a job taking care of us. I don't want a present. I don't even know you. Sure you do. You met me at the post office the other day. Oh, come on, kid. Let's get acquainted. So we can't get the $2,000 by this afternoon, and Sally won't marry him, and he has to get out. This man had won the house. So sister's, uh, boyfriend? No. Her boyfriend, I know she's stuck on him. Every, she got mad every time I talked about him killing his boss. She said he didn't do it. I don't think he did it either. But if he did, he had a good reason for it. He was a swell fella. He was a cowboy. And that's what I'm gonna be Wait a minute. I... You get my horse a drink of water. Let me go, you uh, Oh. Let me go! Come on, Kip. Don't be so stingy. Hey, you... Say, what's your idea? What are you doing here? Oh, I just took a little ride, Butch. And while I was riding, I composed a beautiful burial sermon. Would you like to hear it? No. No. Oh, I was only kidding, Deacon. I, I ain't sore. I was, uh, uh, she was... Oh, come on, let's get out of here. Not so fast, brother. Mmm, smells good. Sister, be a good Samaritan and feed two starving pilgrims. We are family. Would you turn us from your door? If you're hungry, I'd, I'd be glad to feed you. Come on. down, have a bite. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. Come, sister, sit down. No, I'd rather wait for dinner. Sit down. There. I don't see anything. Look again. Don't you see? No, what is it? Oh, your fortune. Come, I'll read it to you. Oh. I see a man. He wishes to marry you. He has much land, many cattle, but you do not love him. I see another man. He is walking alone, under a cloud. He's in great danger, but he loves you. Someday, he'll come back. And I think you'll get your wish. I say you'll get your wish. Thank you, sir. It was a lovely fortune. But I don't think it'll come true. Oh, so you don't think I know what I'm talking about, eh? Very well. I shall eat. Brother Carter, I think you need a little more coffee. 
<laughs> well, miss, how much do we owe you for his dinner? Well, Jerry, I shouldn't take pay. I... Very well. I'll set the tray. Butch, pay the lady for our dinner. Huh? Oh, oh yeah. How much? Pay her $2,000. $2,000? Why, you... You don't want it? Well, I'll take it back. Come on, let's go. for my answer, Sally. I can do a lot for you. And for the boy, too, if you only let me. Mm. Hear me! It's all right, Sally. We can send him to school where they'll make a little uh, gentleman out of him. No. I'm sorry, Mr. Buck. I can't marry you. Don't, don't be foolish, child. You don't want to move away from here, do you? But he loves you. And someday, he'll come back. No, and I won't move away from here either. Here's your money, Mr. Barker. Hooray, out of the old foot! Get this money. Never mind where we got it from. We didn't ask you where you got yours when you loaded the car. Give us our note. You get back to the mine. I've got a little business to take care of. Alone. What about the interest? There isn't any interest. You loaned my father fifteen hundred and made him sign a note for two thousand. And we have papers to prove it. The note, please, Mr. Walker. I hope you aren't making a mistake, Sally. And here's the door, Mr. Walker, in case you forgot. And don't look back. Remember what happened to Lot's wife. You little devil, I'll wring your neck.
fellow sitting there quiet like. He comes in from behind and sticks a gun in my back and takes the dough. Well, what could I do? He has a drop on me. Well, I knew it was something crooked about that guy. Yeah, I know it too. Well, what you gonna do about it? Hey, you boys get your rifle. And if he comes over the hill, ventilate him. But don't let him get close enough to use his gun. I'll stay here and plug him from the window if he comes up the canyon. Okay, sir. You nervous? Uh, you're trying to shoot a rabbit? No, a rat. Well, what do you want with a rat? Shut up. Yeah. Hey, sir, what happened to Lot's wife? Lot's wife? Oh, you mean the lady in the Bible? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, she done turned us off. You see, she lived in a town of Tota. So she married a fella by the name of Lot. Now, why they call him Lot was because he had a lot of dough and a lot of sheep and everything. <laughs> so she started traveling around with a fella from Sonora. And that's where Salt Lake is now. But she started traveling around with him, and the neighbors started scandalizing him going on. You, you know how they do, see? So she's on her way home, and just as she started out, one of the neighbors said, honey, so your husband is looking for you, and she got scared because she knew she's trapped around on her husband, see? And she started running. And she started running down the street, and just as she got two blocks away from where she was, it started raining. And the rain started pouring down. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, man, it was cold. And she kept on running and looking back. So she got tired. See, she got to a place, and she sat down, called herself going to rest. And you know she couldn't move? She sat right there and couldn't move. She hadn't turned to no stones or nothing like that, and she didn't turn to salt. And the water kept on getting up on her, and, and it kept on melting her, and kept on melting her, and it melted, and she got that little load until it washed her away. And when the water washed her away, that's how come the lake is salty. Brother, you'd better take another look at your body. Looking for someone? Who, me? No. No? Oh, what's the deal? No, sir. He just said he was aiming to shoot a rat. I thought you might be the least bit sore about this. Hey, what's the idea? It's all right, fellas. I had to tell you all wrong. Look. Deacon's a great guy. Me and him's gonna be partners, ain't we? Sure, good. <laughs> when I get back east, I'm gonna make you my Western representative. Come on, boys, we got a little work to do. See you later, Deacon. Look at them, high-tailed it on the run. I wonder what they up to. I don't know. Now's our chance. Come on. Bill, keep a lookout for me. Well, sister, how are you feeling? I'll pay you well to get me out of here. Will you pay as much as John Barker paid to put you in there? Why? Did he pay you to kidnap me? Not exactly. He paid to have you murdered. Two thousand dollars. I'll give you my rank. I'll give you anything you ask. You can just get me out of here. I'm rich. I can pay. Why are you so anxious to get out of there? To see John Barker hang. For what? Kidnapping? No. For murdering my husband. Then Barker killed your husband, did he? Yes, yes. And now he's trying to kill me. What's up? Woman. I'm making a hurry. We're going to have company. Are you earning a dime? Can I join your gang when I grow up? Daddy says 
<laughs> Listen, Jimmy. For once, let me do the talking. Will you do me a favor? Sure. Get to town as fast as you can. Tell the sheriff and his deputy to come to the old mines in Perdita Canyon right away. What if they won't come? Tell them I've kidnapped your sister. That'll get them. Say, what's the big idea? Don't you trust me, Jimmy? You bet. with my own money. <laughs> yeah, and then he took it away from you. <laughs> you crazy if you think he'll get away with that. But that ain't all, boss. Mrs. Steele is up at the mine, and the deacon wouldn't let me go in there to say anything to her. Why, you double-crossing rat. You told me. I know I did, boss. But listen, well, let me tell you, it's like this. I couldn't do anything. Shut up. That settles it. Now listen to me, you yellow mugs. You Johnson. You go to town and tell the sheriff that you and Butch saw this deacon guy take me to steal up to the mine. Don't worry. We need time to get there before the sheriff does. And Butch, you and Ted and me are going up there, and I'm going to see to it that you finish the job I paid you for. And uh, in the meantime, we'll give this deacon fellow a bad case of lead poison. And when the sheriff gets there, we'll tell him that the deacon did it, and we killed him, trying to protect the woman. Not me. That guy shoots too straight and too fast and with both hands. He hasn't got eyes in the back of his head, has he? If he's in the house, we'll go in and talk to him kind of peaceful-like. Ted'll stay outside and plug him in the back through the window. Then you take care of the lady. All right? Give us about 10 minutes, Johnson. Then ride to the sheriff's office real fast. So your horse will be all lathered up good. Come on. I tell you, everything will be all right. Will you sit down there and act quiet for about two minutes? No, I won't. There now. In a couple of minutes, you'll know what this is all about. Understanding, see? Now, uh, if you expect Butch and the boys to let you hide out here, you've got to be reasonable. You probably didn't know that they were working for me, or you wouldn't have held me up. Now, would you? simple. You leave us alone and we leave you alone. That's fair, ain't it? I'm willing to forget about that little affair you pulled this afternoon. Yourself. <laughs> Sally! Get him up, you guys. Jimmy, are you all right? 
pretty mess. Kidnapping and wholesale murder. You boys got anything to say for yourself? I can explain everything, Chef. In the first place, I don't think they're dead. That one's moving now. And in the second place, the girl wasn't kidnapped. She was too kidnapped. You told me yourself you were going to kidnap her. And he told me to tell you he was doing it. And that was to be sure you had gone. Because I said you wouldn't. But he said you had to, so I'd be sure to tell you. You spent you so long getting here, everything was over. And that's why I don't never want to be a kid. But I sent that boy to fetch you if I'd have been really kidnapping his sister. But there's been kidnapping and murder, too. And if you come outside with me to the old mine, I'll show you who really is the guilty party. All right. But watch them, boys. Bring them along and watch them, too. Take you with me. He is the jazzless little boy I 